So Dragon's Dogma 2 has been out for a few weeks now. I got about 30 hours into it, and at that amount of playtime, I can safely say that I do enjoy the game. But that being said, I feel like I need to talk about a few of these things that have been going on that I don't see being talked about online, and I don't know if there's just a collective acceptance of everything that's going on in this game, or if people are just not talking out about it. Because some of these things are truly making me consider if I should have just waited a couple of months before actually picking up this game. Now, obviously, this is just my opinion, and so if you disagree, well, then that's good for you. You can enjoy your opinion, but I'm gonna give mine. And so, without further ado, let's get into some of the things that I just do not understand how it got past the final stages of quality assurance. Because these things are truly frustrating me in my playthrough of the game. If you enjoy me ranting about some of these stupid things that go on in games sometimes, then just be sure to hit that subscribe button below. All right, let's get into it. Number one, the stamina meter. By itself, I think that the stamina meter is perfectly fine. I think that when you're in combat, having a resource so that way you're not just constantly spamming the same ability over and over again is something that's perfectly fine. It keeps the game balanced and prevents you from spamming attacks endlessly. That's not the problem. The problem that I have with the stamina meter is the 90% of the rest of the game where you're walking from point A to point B and every 10 to 15 seconds your character runs out of breath and has to take at least 4 seconds to regain his strength because he decided to skip gym class every Thursday and sit at the vending machine eating a pop tart with his friends behind the stairwell. To my knowledge at this point in the game, there is nothing in the overworld when you're not in combat that utilizes your stamina meter to a large degree if at all. And so then I have have to ask why does it deplete if there's nothing that i have to worry about in the overworld from running out of stamina then why don't they just treat it like i'm in a city where i have unlimited stamina and i can just run to my heart's content what is the difference between that and being in the overworld sure there might be some scenarios where i have to be conscious of it as i go into a fight because i might be low on stamina as i enter into the fight with a griffin or a dragon or something like that but you know what i do in those scenarios i just wait three seconds and my stamina's back up or you know what i do i use an item and bada bing bada boom my stamina's back and we go into the fight and we take and we win i just feel like it was a little bit of an oversight that could be adjusted to be a quality of life fix that just needs to happen which there's a handy dandy mod for too if you just don't want to wait on a dev to potentially do that or not do that so if you want to go and find a mod for that links in the description below if you want to find it number two the combat now i want to start by saying this is not a critique of the skills that each of the classes have and the dynamic roles that each of them play within their own party composition, I think that Capcom does an amazing job at creating these unique and individual classes that blend together within a party. And I love to have different combinations of classes within my roster and trying them out and seeing what works and what doesn't work and what might be fun for me to play, what might be fun for my pawns to have, and just to see where I can take composition and how far I can go. Like, do I want to have a party of all rogues? You can do that. Do you want to have a party of all mages or of all fighters? You can do anything that you want. And that's not the problem. My problem is I noticed that every single class that I play, it feels like there's this jaggedness to every single one of their motions that they do, where after I do an attack, it feels like that there's just this ending lag that's ever so slightly too long for each and every single one of their classes some of them more so than others and it just detracts from the overall feel of the character like despite the fact that i'm playing as the agile thief somebody who's dual wielding daggers and supposed to be speed blitzing the entire competition why does it still feel like in my basic attacks that there's such rigidity to my combos that i don't have full control over the battlefield and the ability to dodge as needed. It gets even worse when you get to characters like the warrior who are designed to be slow and it only gets exacerbated by this issue of weird end lag. It's one thing if an attack has a long wind up time. That makes sense. But the ability to have control over my character within my attack animations is what makes a character feel fluid. Long wind ups are not bad designs for characters. They're good because they incentivize us committing to our attacks for a certain duration of time. But it's about the ability to cancel that at a moment's notice to be able to dodge or to be able to react to what's going on, which creates a level of fluidity. Just because your class is designed to be this slow moving heavy hitter doesn't mean 
that his overall movement and animations need to lock you into them all the time. And I understand that the audience for this game might also be people who got into Capcom games like Monster Hunter, in which it feels very close to using the Greatsword class in that. And so I understand where people might be used to that and they say, oh, well, it's just the Capcom way. And while I agree for it in the case of Monster Hunter, this is a completely different game. And the animation issue doesn't just exist at the end lag of what we're doing. It also exists in your recovery animations to get up from the various types of damage that you can be afflicted with throughout the game. There are numerous times that I've played this game where I get knocked down by a mob and my party members are dispersed doing whatever, and then because of that, all that the enemies are focusing on at that moment is me. And so I'm trying to get up, I'm trying to heal myself, and the enemies are just wailing on me time and time and time again because my character doesn't get up fast enough and there's nothing that my party members are doing because of it. If there's anybody out there that can create a mod that when you die, the enemies will aggro on to the nearest party member, I would love you. Because that was one of the biggest concerns I had going throughout my playthrough, was that I would die and I would use an item to resurrect myself, and as I would get up from being healed, I would get attacked because the enemy never stopped targeting me for some reason, even though I was already dead. And so please, Capcom, make your animations end quicker. Make us be able to get up sooner. And please, let us stop being attacked once we're finally on the ground and dead, so that way we can actually get up once we're dead. Number three. The story is absolutely trash. At this point in recording, I have finished the main story and I've gone into New Game Plus and I'm starting to do the things that I missed in my first playthrough of the game. And while I'm having fun going back in and having all of my gear and my levels for my skills brought over, there's something about the story that is just really poorly designed. You see, the world of Dragon's Dogma is very, very well done. There are so many dungeons to go through, there are so many places to explore and to loot, but my problem with the story is that the story of Dragon's Dogma 2 does not bring you to all of the various locations that you can explore throughout the game. Spoiler warnings real quick for if you haven't beaten the story of Dragon's Dogma 2 and you want to remain spoiler free, this is your chance to click away right now, I'll have a timestamp here to where you can fast forward to get the rest of the video. At a certain point in the game, there's a point of no return where the entire world gets absolutely drenched in this red mist and the final moments of the game are upon you. And in that, one of your main quests that you're given is to go to the main leaders of the villages that you've visited thus far in your adventure and to do a quest for them to evacuate them from the cities before it's destroyed. And while that sounds like a really cool quest idea for an opportunity to kind of do this victory lap through these places, do one last thing for them and to help them out before the world is potentially destroyed, there was something that I realized as I was looking at the list of the villages that was in the quest. Some of those places I had never been to in the entire time playing the game thus far. A story is only as good as the world that exists for the story to take place in. It can't take place without the world. And so why does the game think that it can get away with ignoring some of its critical locations like this elf village that I visited at the end of the game or not bringing me to this one area that you need to go to in order to get two of the hidden classes in the game? The story for the game is utterly forgettable and on top of that, it does a poor job of inserting me into this world and actually giving me a reason to care about the things that are happening in the world. I got more enjoyment and more exposure to the the world of Dragon's Dogma by just running around for hours and hours on end doing random side quests and random dungeons than anything that the story could have done for me. It's also just incredibly short in general. And so by the time I got to the end of the game, I was literally asking, it can't be this short, can it? But it was. And the sad part with that is I know that Capcom can make good stories. It's just that this was not one of them and it probably will never be. And as a result, the rest of the world suffers. But what do you think? What do you enjoy about the game? What do you hate about the game? What are the things that you're like, eh, I don't really care about this in the game? Let me know. Write it down in the comments below, and let's have a discussion about it. All right, that's it for me now. I'll catch you in the next video. See ya!